Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Link Baptist Church. Before I go any further, you know, guys, it's, it's the first week in March was when we stopped having service after I passed appreciation. And uh, in two weeks, we'll be back at the first Sunday in March. And the church has been almost out of the building for a year. And in that time, so many churches have seen people drift away from the church. And, and I think God is allowing us to look at ourselves to see who's really in, who's not really in. And that's not, it's, it's not a finger pointing thing, but it's people, if you've drifted away, just say, Lord, I drifted away, but I want to come back. If you know people who've drifted away, come back in. You know, God has cut out the corporate worship in the church. He wants us to worship individually at home. Because COVID-19, we cannot have a corporate worship in the church. We cannot have fellowship in the church. So the only thing left is discipleship and evangelism. Now, discipleship is teaching. Evangelism is Sunday school. So we did some evangelism in church today. We did some, and Sunday school is evangelism. So the five works. Worship is down right now because we can't corporate worship. And fellowship is down out of the five works. The last work is ministry. What are you doing for the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, that you got two works in between that are left that we can do. And those works are this, is evangelism and it's discipleship. We are a discipling church. We teach. We don't put on the show. We want to teach and believe God's word and teach it the way the Lord gives it. So, you know, in today's lesson, it is vitally important that we take notes because, you know, it, it, it's kind of, it's, it's not self-explanatory, but God lays the foundation before he leaves. The Lord Jesus laid the foundation about who we are, what we're supposed to do. And I really do pray that you, you hear from the Lord today. And my, my prayer is that I might te totally decrease and the spirit of the living God increase. Before we get into the sermon, I'd like to give you a couple of announcements. The announcement, and primarily from the missing link, for those who are asking a question about the missing link, we do have, Jay, you're going to messenger her what the missing link is. Is it on the website yet? Is it on the website? Well, we're about to put it on the website about who and what the missing link is. And if you are a part of, want to be a part of the missing link, that means you can be a part of the link from a national or international perspective. And we're inviting you to be a part of the missing link. They're gonna, Jay, my nephew Jay is gonna message you, and then we're gonna have it on the website, thelinkbaptistchurch.net. One word, thelinkbaptistchurch.net. T h e l i n k b a p t i s t c h u r c h dot net. Thelinkbaptistchurch.net. One, visit our website. But this should be on there, preferably by tomorrow. What the missing link is. Want to make announcements? Please go to the, to our YouTube page and subscribe. Check out the YouTube. Some people don't do um, social media; uh, they don't do, I guess, Instagram and 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 Facebook. Did we do we start an Instagram page up this morning? We're gonna start an Instagram page up along with our felt with our uh, Facebook. We want to hit social media with the Word of God, and you'll understand why. We're updating our church directory, so please message us or text us at the church designated line for social media, 478-390-0501. That number again is 478-390-0501. So become a part of what God is doing. We encourage you and we invite you to be a part of what God is doing. That being said, I think this is for what the world called Valentine's Day a message of love. This is a message of love. It's called the last commission. Turn with me to the book of Acts, if you will, please. And I want to have a word of prayer when you get to the, the book of Acts. The Acts is not just a book, but God used his servant Luke to, re to record the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the apostles. It's what they did. It's this morning Sunday school. It is what did you do? What did you do with Jesus? What did you do about Jesus? What did you do with him while you were alive? 
What did you, so the Acts of the Apostles is going to be our lesson for the day from the, where it's going to come from. And I want to tell you that I pray that God will speak to all of us that we in the flesh might decrease, but the Spirit of God might increase in us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you today. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to worship and adore you. It's not just a worship thing, Lord. We absolutely adore you. Lord, you, you died for us on Calvary. We thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, now we pray you'd open our ears, enlighten our hearts, Lord, that we might hear from you. Father, speak because we desire to be your servants and ultimately be your friend. And after we're your friend, we declare we want to be your son and we want to be your daughters. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for being our God. And we pray you'd hide us behind the cross. Speak, Lord. Your people are ready to listen and obey. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn them, if you will, to the book of Acts. I want to send you through, through a couple of places today uh, but, so, because I want you to get the, uh, the, the full counsel of God, the whole thing, not just the peace, but get the full counsel of God. Today, I want to read you Acts chapter 1. And Carmen, I, I want to, I'm, I'm going to actually read verse 4 through 8, but I know our, our verse is only 8. Our verse is only 8. But to give you a heads up, I want to read you Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8. But our key verse, our only verse that we're going to deal with is verse 8. The Holy Spirit is promised to all of those. That's why you do your work at home. So the Holy Spirit can speak to you. And being assembled together, as those called out ones, all those went to church together. They're not called a church right here, right now, in Acts chapter 1, by the, by the way. But they will be called the church a little later on. They're just an assembly right now. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, this Christ speaking, but to wait for the promise of, of the Father. That's the Holy Spirit. He is the promise of the Father. We're going to hold off. I'm just going to follow. Thank you, dude. I really do appreciate it. I, I, I messed up my email and couldn't pick up what Carmen Baker had for me. Jay just corrected it, so thank you. But I'm just going to follow Carmen. Thank you, dude. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them to not depart. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave. Stay, be still from Jerusalem. But to wait Remember this word, the promise of the Father. God made a promise where you said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, there's a water baptism that we do to identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. The water baptism cannot save us, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are saved. When you accept God's Son, the Holy Spirit resides in you. Therefore, when they had come together, when they, again, when they came together, they always meeting, there's that body of Christ meeting together again. They asked him, been saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Jen, at this time, they still don't get it. They, I mean, they still don't get it. He has, he, he's died. He's been beaten. He's been crucified. He's died. He has been resurrected. He has lived 40 days since the resurrection. Now it's time for him to go because the promise of the Father coming in 10 days. 40 plus 10 is 50. The Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. There you go. Penta 5, 50 days after the resurrection, the day of Pentecost. Listen, he's, that's the promise of the Father that the Holy Spirit is coming. Now, we, we, we love Jesus, but he's going to try to love the Holy Spirit just a little bit more because he can be with everybody anywhere all the time. Jesus, the person, fulfilled his mission and purpose. Everybody's got a purpose. Here we go. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of God in Israel? He said to them, no, baby, it is not time for you to know Times a season which the Father has put 
in his own authority. But the promise is this, you shall receive the Holy Ghost power, the power of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. This is a promise. When God is in you, the promise of the Father is you'll be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ or you'll be a witness for yourself. And that means God's Spirit is not in you. Be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. But the promise of the Father, Jesus said, Jesus is speaking on behalf of the Father. He said, the promise of the Father, that you'll be a witness of me everywhere you go. Be a witness of me, Jesus. In Jerusalem, that's your circle of influence. That's your, your friends. That's your neighborhood. That's your city. That's your town. And all of Judea, Judea, that's your region. We live in the great state of Georgia. The question came to Jay about the missing link. Came to you guys at the missing link. It's from North Carolina. The man, the pastor who spoke in Sunday school, he's from Atlanta. God's doing his part. So he should be witnesses of him. So it's living proof that we're witnesses of him because of the call from North Carolina, because of the, the message from Atlanta. Witnesses Jerusalem and Macon, Georgia, in the community of Bellevue. God placed us in the hot spot. Yeah, we're the right people for the hot spot. We're in Bellevue. In our Jerusalem. Judea is a great state of Georgia. Whatever state you're in, that's your Judea. Samaria is all of America. It's the national thing. That's the land which they were in, Samaria. And then the last part is where social media is going to come in here. Social media is one tool that can reach to the end of the earth. It can do it. It is doing it. We know now that the link is being heard in Egypt and Greece and Canada and all over these United States that we're his witnesses. And by the way, we just got started. Wait until the world really and truly meets the missing link when they're ready. When they're ready. Here we go. But you shall receive power. Remember, you don't get the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. If the Holy Spirit is not in you, you don't have the Holy Ghost Christ power. And, and, and there's no doubt about it. He said the promise is you'll be a witness to me. You'll unashamedly go to Instagram and to Facebook, even to TikTok. TikTok. You even go to TikTok. <laughs> Nico says only eight seconds. Yeah, you can. I take. I give me a TikTok. I TikTok. Take TikTok. Hold on, that's been cheap. Take it to the world. Take Jesus to the world, is what he's saying. And I want to give you three commissions before I get into the sermon. And, and, you, and you make a stand and know this one. When, when, when you take your test, Terrence, Jay, Keith, when y'all take your test, turn with me. And I'm, I'm, this is the only place I'm take. Turn with me to the book of Malachi. I want to show you something. The original commission of what God says here. Malachi. Chapter 2. When you get to say amen. Malachi chapter 2, and you have to, in order to properly understand and get the meaning of today's word, you got to get all of it. And Carmen, that's why I hate to sing the sermon so early, because some, I, the Lord just stacked more into it. But we're good. We're real good. All right. Malachi chapter 2. Now, he said, if you love me, you'll obey me. But remember what he said, that you're going to be witness of his and the promise of the, of the Father. Malachi chapter 2, starting at verse 10. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Yes, sir, according to Psalm uh, 100. Why do we deal treacherously with one another? Why, why are we so mean to each other? Christ would be a witness for him by profaning the covenant of the fathers, by not doing what God tells you to do. Judah has dealt, this is God's people, has dealt treacherously 
and an abomination has been committed in Israel and Jerusalem. God's people sold him out. Now he's going to have a new, see, the original deal was to God's people. They didn't do it. To this day, Israel still has not done it. They have not done what God told them to do. Uh, for Judas profaned the Lord's holy institution, which he loves. He has married the daughter of a foreign god. That's when people come and get into idolatry and do what they want to do because they want to do what they want to do and not what God tells them to do. May the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob the man who does this, being awake and being aware, yet who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts. Why are you coming and giving me an offering and you've been cut off and you don't love God and follow Jesus? Verse 13 and 14, I'm going to end there. And this is the second thing you do. Now, he got one charge. He don't give him a second charge. Now, all of our charges are nailed to the cross of Christ for those who believe. And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears. You pretend like you belong to God. You try to fake people out like they don't know that you are a phony and a fake. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. So he does not regard the offering anymore. You need to quit talking because you're not fooling anybody. And people see that you are a phony and a fake. Nor receive it with good will from his hand. Yet you say for what reason? Because the Lord, here's your original commission, has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth with whom you have dealt treacherously Yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. For those who are into Christ and know that we are part of the, the body, the building, and the bride. God says that he will stand, the original commission, they didn't do it. God said he'll stand as a witness against you. Now you can fake the people out in the church. You can think you can do that. But God says one day the original commission, Adam and Eve, the original commission, God says that you will not fake me. And there are consequences. Now, the original commission was just that. In, in the Gospels, according to Matthew and John Mark, the last chapters, 28 in, in, in Matthew, he's going to, in the last chapter in Mark, Christ's going to give what's known as the Great Commission. You got the original commission in Malachi chapter 2, all right, 11 through 14. The second one is the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. Turn there for a quick second. I, 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 I just lied to y'all. I told y'all I wasn't going to give y'all. Let me, let me show you. Please forgive me. I just want you to turn to Matthew chapter 28 so you can understand it's not me making up anything. You got the original commission about Adam and Eve and about us and the nation of Israel that God says he was. Remember, he said he's married to the backslider. He's married to, the, to those that love him. We just got to have the ceremony when he comes. But here's the great commission. We got the original commission in Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, and Malachi chapter 2. Now, in the great commission, this is commission to everybody who believes. Then the 11 disciples, verse 16, I'm sorry, Christ has died and been resurrected. They sin, and he has been risen indeed, that he is no longer in a borrowed tomb. They killed him. Your sins killed him. They beat him to death, but he has risen indeed. Verse 16, then the, he told them all to meet. Then the 11 disciples went into Galilee to the mountain which, he, which Jesus had told them and appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some still doubted. And Jesus said to, and came and spoke to them, to those who really did believe. Here's the good news that's got to go with Acts chapter 1. All authority has been given to me in Jesus. In heaven and on earth, Christ is ruler of heaven and earth. And guess what he's going to do, dude? Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. He said, follow him. And follow him alone because he has all power and he has all authority. He tells us to get up out of the church and go. So when you open up your Facebook page, your Instagram page, when you, when you do this stuff, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. The church is starting to do that, make disciples 
in our nation, in our Jerusalem, in our Judea, in our Samaria, and, and the ends of this earth. And somewhere in here, we come back to church, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then you teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. How is he with us? By the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. See, after he had died and been resurrected, he lives 40 days with them. 40 represents trial and probation to prove to the world that he's alive and he's seen by a lot of people. Christ's the only one that can make that claim. That yea, though he lived, he died, but he won't die again. So everybody who was raised from the dead, they died again. But those of us who live, we live under Christ. So we get to the last commission in Acts chapter 1. The last commission is this. The promise of the Father. And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is, is, is called dunamis in the Greek. What, what that means is this. That's the power. That's the Holy Ghost power. We cannot have church without the Holy Spirit. We're just a bunch of people making noise. Now, a lot of people are going to be doing that in the tribulation when the Holy Spirit is gone and the church is gone. There's going to be a lot of nice buildings and nice cars that people are going to come and live in. They got seven years of hell on earth. And then eventually the millennial will come in. Here we go. The Holy Spirit has come in. We got the original commission in Malachi 2, 11 through 14, and Genesis chapter 1 through 3. And then we got the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, 19 through 20. And we got the last commission. And it says that in your Thompson Chain Reference Bible, over here, verse 4, the last commission. That's the last thing Christ said. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, here we go. We see that he has been here 40 days, but even his time is up. He's got to go now. So he's going to ascend. He's going to go from here ascending. I mean, he's going to go up because the Holy Spirit is about to descend. And in Acts chapter 2, Carmen Baker, he's going to say that, that the Holy Spirit is going to come in and he's not going to take any prisons. He's going to come in in Acts chapter 2. It's like a rushing mighty wind. He comes in with power and, and authority. Let me read that for you so you'll understand. Acts chapter 2. Here we go. The coming of the Holy Spirit. Remember, that's the promise of the Father. Acts chapter 2. It says, the day of Pentecost over in your right-hand margin, the Holy Spirit fills believers. That's the fire on the inside. What are you going to do about the fire on the inside? When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. There you go. They're in the church building again. That's that Sunday school lesson. One accord in one place, all the believers. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. That's the promise from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as, as a fire. What you going to do with the fire on the inside? And one sat upon it and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that one again one day, just tell you that. Some people are going to tell you, you're not saved unless you speak in tongues. That's not what that just said. It's not. The Holy Spirit came in, and that's what they did. But if you accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that he died for your sin, once saved, always saved. I never spoke an unknown tongue before in my life. That's not a gift. 1 Corinthians 12 is going to tell you that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And some of, everybody don't have the same gifts in the body as we discovered in Sunday school. Some people can't do it. Some people, y'all, you know, let me tell you something. They don't put me in a box up here, right? I can only go so far to stay in. But, but the, the Holy Spirit gifts everybody, when, when, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit gives you a gift. And, and everybody, don't have, some people got the gift of knowledge, some wisdom, tongues, administration. You know, everybody's got a gift. And it's for the edifying, it's the, 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 for the building up of the body of Christ. But, 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 but when, you, when you look at the gifts, he's going to tell us the big one, Mr. Terrence, is this. That if you don't have love, you, your gift is just moot. It means nothing. 
that the gift without the fruit means nothing. The fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, is peace, is long-suffering, is goodness, is kindness. People of God, it is when you take care of self, self-control. That's what God gives us. And against those things right there, there's no law. There's nothing can stop that. So when you look at this today, the Holy Spirit is giving you this thing. And the fruit of the Spirit, F-R-U-I-T, not S, but the fruit, one lump. Everything originates and starts from love. So what the Lord gave me in, in, in the sermon today was this. I'm ready, Carmen Baker, let's go. The prescription is this. The prescription that he gave us, that when, out of all this is happening, all Christ is telling you to do in Acts chapter 1 is participate. Get in the meeting. Get in the game. Do something. The prescription is just participation. Get involved. Do something. But you, have, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Why? Get involved. He, he said you, when you're a witness, that means you're participating in your own. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Get involved. Do something in the name of Jesus. Let's go, Carmen Baker. Go back for a second. I see you can sign your name. There you go. Sign your name, your age, the day's date that you got involved, and sign your name with a prescription. My prescription may not be your prescription, but we all got one prescription to be a witness. But my assignment may not be your assignment. Your assignment may not be John's and Mary, but get involved. Let's go, Carmen. Here it is, the, pre the preparation. It's called the Ikea effect. And there's a business called Ikea. And, and where it came from, Jay, you, you like this, dude, because it is, it's, it's based upon a principle, a business principle. The Ikea effect is a cognitive, it's a mind thing, bias in which consumers, in which people go out and buy stuff, in which consumers place a disproportionate high value on products that they partially created. You know, you can build, when you can go buy, because I don't think they, you, you, you get it and it's already put together, right? So you have to do it. You can buy it, I guess, at a discounted rate, but you got to put it together. So that's the idea. that We'll, we'll get it right for you. We'll get it, but you got to put it together. All you got to do is buy it. I had a little drawer in my office that Tim put together. Now, it looked good, but the drawer don't work right and the thing coming off. But I couldn't fix it together myself. I got him to do it, and I probably could have did better than he did. But listen, no, I couldn't, Tim. No, I couldn't. Listen, the IKEA effect is a cognitive, it's a mind thing, bias in which consumers, people who spend their money, place a disproportionate high value on the product they cr partially created. People think, I did a good job by, by doing, building this thing right here. Now, this is the effect. This is not my law. I'm just telling you. The name refers to a Swedish manufacturer and furniture retailer called IKEA. Their, 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 their business idea was people think they did a really good job when they participate in furnishing their house and building their beds and cabinets that they put a high value on what they did. Remember that. They participated. Go ahead, Carmen Baker. The, the IKEA effect was identified and named by three college students, one from Duke, two from Harvard. They described the IKEA effect as labor alone can be sufficient to induce great liking for the fruits. Now, this is worldly of one's labor. That you, you get a sad sense of satisfaction from your labor. Even constructing a standardized bureau, a piece of furniture, in arduous, kind of a hard, a strange effort, difficult and tiring, that is kind of hard to do. It's solitary, it's alone can lead the people to overvalue their often poorly constructed creation. Now, I didn't write that. That people did it. And I was saying yesterday in leadership about the people with the phone. And we're not going to really go through this because the wife and I went through it about that. She would walk around stumping like this right here because I wouldn't help her on the phone. And she was talking to the lady on the phone. And I was just watching her stumping and be mad because I, I wasn't going to try to help him on the phone. I wasn't going to try to help her set the phone. I put an ID on it, because I can't do that stuff. I, if I do it, I'm going to mess it up. 
And she walked through. She wanted me to see she was angry, right? So she walked through the room because she's doing all the work. And I'm just sitting down. I just watched it. I started playing solitaire on the computer. And she's mama something. She say something, she'd come through again. She did all the work. <laughs> she did all the work. And I got all the fruit from it. Now that's not how it goes, is it? It's not. I know it's wrong, but I can admit it. I, but I listen. I don't take joy in trying to do that stuff because I, and that's not my forte. Here we go. They, watch, the, watch now. They describe, describe a key effect as labor alone can be sufficient. It wasn't yesterday. To induce greater, for Friday anyway, for the fruits of one's labor. Even constructing a standardized bureau in arduous is, is a hard effort. Solitary can lead people to overvalue their often poorly constructed creation. Effort justification. Do you justify what you said or did, demonstrated that the more effort someone put into something, the more someone will value it. It's the test of consumer psychology. Yeah, and I'm, I'm grateful that she has a heart and a mind for it. And what, they, what it ended up doing, it justified it, saying, people, it really was real. It really was real. And you know what, our kids are very rich business because they believe in their concept. Now, the Ikea effect says participate in it. Now, that's similar to where I'm going to go in the scriptures about participating in your own salvation. Get involved. When you get involved and you see you can make the table for your house or build something for your home, and your home is more beautiful because of what you did. So then I need to go back to Ikea again because I really like what I did, what y'all sold me. So it's a win-win situation for them because people, and you know what? It normally costs more than the product I already created. Did y'all know that? You don't get the discount you think you're getting. You know how people tell you, well, we're going to discount your phone. They're not, you're going to pay for it somewhere. They're not giving it, trust me, they're not giving anything for free. But when you participate, and whatever's going on, it makes you feel better in the world. But when you do it for the Lord Jesus Christ, it makes him see you in a greater light. And that's what you want. You want to please the master. You want to please the father. You do. Now, it's good to participate in things here on earth. But remember, the prescription is participation. Effort justification demonstrated that the more effort Somebody put into something, when you go to build up the kingdom of God, now that's consumer psychology, the more someone will value. When you put it into the church, that's when you mature, when you grow in grace, when you grow in grace and you mature, when things happen because you are participating in your own salvation. That's what the Lord told us, to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, that you participate in your own salvation. It's just like selling furniture for kids. Same concept. Let's go, Carmen. Baby. <clears throat> so you got a participation. Then today I can make a profession that I did not participate with the phone. But listen, and, and you know, and here's the problem we were talking about yesterday. We did it Friday, and we still went clear yesterday. I could have sworn I told her, and I might have just said in my heart, I'm never going to try and fix that phone. But she said, I didn't tell her that. Well, that's how I always felt in my heart. I was never going to do it. Never. I'd rather pay somebody to do it for me because I, my, my email account went out this morning, and I messed it up, and Jay don't even know my codes, and he just fixed it back again for me. I mean, just real time, just now. That's why I don't have my computer. Because I'm, I, that's not me. Work with me. Profession. Just say... I, you, if, if y'all had to come to my house and, and sit on some furniture that I made, <laughs> everybody be standing up. Listen, bro, man, what's wrong with your chair with a Why is crooked like that? Listen, to say, to profess, participate, but, you know, profess, my gifting is not, I missed the breakfast so tough here, man. I missed the breakfast we used to have. And the people who cook the breakfast, I'm not a cook, 
but I enjoyed the eating. No, think about it, what I'm saying. I mean, but that's, but that's their part of the body. And I'm saying, so when you do your part, when you participate and do your part, you can profess that I like what you're doing. You encourage them and you compliment them. And then they come and say, I like what you're doing because you're living your part. I mean, people, it really does work. God's plan and his system, it does work. Now, everything that's based in marketing is evangelism. That's all it is. It's just putting your product out there so people can receive. All these concepts that the world is using, they really come from the Bible, but man put his spin on them. Watch this right here. It's a, a poem called Footprints. How many have ever lived this right here? Y'all are familiar with poem Footprints? Let me, let me read it for you. One night, man, said, I, had, I dreamed a dream. He said, I was walking along the beach with my Lord. He was having a good walk with the Lord. Across the dark... Uh, sky flash scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to me and one to the Lord. When the last scene of my life shot before me, I looked back at the pr- footprints in the sand. And I'm saying, Lord, something ain't right, something's wrong. See, when we start assuming that the Lord's not there, that's when we run into problems. Yeah. That was only one set of footprints. I realized that this was at the lowest and the saddest times of my life. And people, this is not from the Bible, like the key effect is not, but this stuff is based upon a biblical principle. In John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Because God knew we couldn't live this life without, let's go, Carl. <laughs> And the man said, this always bothered me, and I questioned the Lord about my dilemma. Lord, I got a problem. Do you think he got a problem with the Lord when he writes this? Honestly, you think he got a problem with the Lord? Is it okay to tell God I got a problem with you? It is, people, God, it is. It's called a relationship. And then all he's going to do is correct you. That's why you seek godly counsel, so somebody can point you to the word. You know, Jesus questioned God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Habakkuk questioned God, and he knew he needed to stand back, Habakkuk chapter 2, when, when he got corrected. I'm not saying go through life and you, 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 you pumping your chest that you're trying to challenge God. I said, Lord, why is this happening to me? What's going on in my life? Talk to God and get a relationship with him. So, Lord, you told me when I decided to follow you would always walk and talk with me all the way. But I'm aware that during the most troublesome times of my life, there's only one set of footprints. I just don't understand why. When I need you most, you leave me. And the Lord whispered to him, my precious, beautiful child, I love you and will never leave you. Never, ever during the trials and the testings. When you saw the one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Now you can say amen to that. When we get so high on ourselves and we thank God, no, God ain't missing. He ain't gone. That's when he's carrying us. Margaret Fishback Powell. Give me the next one, Carmen. The third one, out of the profession, comes provision. God say, again, it's all these three, the first three are worldly. They are. But they have a good, this is how you can write from what the Holy Spirit gives you. You can write this kind of stuff. You can believe in that key effect. You can believe in the profession. A footprint. You can believe in the provision of the serenity prayer. And Miss Michelle is actually longer than this. But this is a short version that the world deals with. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. The sovereignty of God, all authority. Matthew chapter 28. You're in control, not me. And the courage to change the things that I can. I have given you power to go out there. The courage to change the thing I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah, you have participation. You have profession, and you got provision. That's what God does. Let's go, Carmen Baker. And the last one I'll tell you about, your presentation, the five works. How you present everything you just heard. How do you present Acts chapter 1 when you 
are a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ in your Jerusalem, wherever your Jerusalem may be, your, lo your, your local municipality, wherever your Judea is, your state. We all are in this Samaria together. We all are in the, this end of the earth together. That's why it's vitally important. God knew when, when, when Luke wrote the book of Acts that the Internet was going to come about 2,000 years later. And he, he, he knew. And he tells us to be a witness. How dare you be a witness to everything you like, but not to the Lord Jesus Christ on your Facebook page. That's the promise right there. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. If you want that dunamis, that dynamite power to declare the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where you get it from. The five words. These are the five words that every church that bears the name of Jesus Christ should do. And I mean, uh, these are the five works, and this is how it goes. Let's go, Carmen Baker. It is evangelism. When you're taught in Sunday school, when you learn what the Word of God says, worship. Now, you can, you can put these in different order, but here's the deal. Evangelism, when you learn, when you know what God says, you learn, people learn how to worship and read the Word at home. Then we fellowship one with another. Then discipleship is what we do in the sermon. We teach, and from the sermon, you do ministry. You tell people, go, therefore, and do something in the name of Jesus. The Great Commission and the last commission, because you remember the original commission, that God, he stands as a witness against you. The five works of these, evangelism, that's what I told you. Matthew 28, 19, a, proclaiming that God's government is here. And that Jesus is the only way to God. He tell, and he tells us that God's government is here. Regardless of what people are saying, when you go out there to social media, you tell them, we're, we're, listen, I live in this world, but I accept the authority of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He tells us to go and therefore teach all nations, teach them. That's what we teach, because the Bible says to teach. We're just obeying what the Scripture says, teach. Evangelism. Go ahead, Miss Carlin. Giving God... Glory and service. Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with your mind. He's going to go a little deep and tell him, put your strength in there also. Matthew 22 and 37. And Mark, he's going to add the word strength. Let's go, Carmen. Evangelism, giving God the glory. Fellowship. Any church to name the name of Jesus should be doing these five works. Evangelism, and the second one, it is fellowship with each other. You don't pick and choose in a church who you're going to fellowship with. Now on Facebook, on Instagram, on social media, if people want to get to know you and know who your God is, you do it. I had a young lady approach me on Facebook. She said, hey. I said, hey. She said, you want to be my friend? She sent me a thing, a note. Said, uh, what's that? Friend request. She inboxed me and said, hey. I said, hey. She said, you want to be my friend? I said, yeah, I'll be your friend. And then I got out for a little while. She said, where you at, baby? I hope we're darling or something. She was in Indiana. Now, I'm trying to reach my Samaria, right? And then they told me when she started calling me darling and baby and don't know me. Yeah, she wanted something. But I, but I, but I stopped. I did, but I. I'm, I'm, I want to talk to her about Jesus, but baby doll had a whole new meaning about where she was about to take me. And I learned from some people who told me, you can't fellowship with everybody you think you want to fellowship with. Now, people that love me told me that, so I don't do it anymore because I fellowship with the wrong folks. I did that in the world, too. Fellowship with all the wrong people. So they said, look, we got a fellowship. You do the teaching. How about that? I'll take that one. Fellowship is just joining the people of God in mutual support. They said, Pastor, we got, the, we got that. You do the teaching and the preaching that they'll handle fellowship. I fellowship with them, and they fellowship. They do the, the, the reading and all that stuff. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Listen, when you take the word out there, people receive Jesus. They receive what you said, and they can get baptized in the Spirit right then. Because the power of the Holy Spirit, it can save somebody by your opening up your Facebook or your, your Instagram, whatever social media you got, people receive the power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. Fellowship. That's why we do what we do. Let's go, Carmen. 
The third one is discipleship. And here's the hardest one, I think, out of all of them. Is learning to live in agreement with God's ways. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And as a pastor, I have to tell people stuff that they may not want to hear. I mean, they just really don't want to hear. But listen, people have to tell me stuff too. You're being too hard. My wife said I just didn't care. And the way she was stumbling, she was holding her head down, talking on the phone. I knew she was kind of 38 hot. And I was just watching her. I, I didn't say anything to her. I didn't get in her way. But she got the phone fixed without me. She got the ring doorbell fixed without me. It was cold outside, too. I did go out there and push the button one time for her. Because I laid on the phone, pressed the button. I did go out there and do that. <laughs> that thing was so far to me. Now, listen, don't get me wrong. I, but I told her I can't do that stuff. I, that's not me. Here we go. Discipleship, teaching. Even somebody tried to teach me how to do that stuff. And it, I don't want to know. Learning to live in agreement with God's way. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you. Matthew 28 and 20. Discipleship. And Carmen has to feel, be a loving witness. Baptize, serve, visit, love, share. Humility. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome visitors. Teach children. Give hope. The least of these. Visit prisoners. Clothe the widows and orphans. Minister. I love this. Teach and give sacrificially. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know where Carmen get that stuff from. But that's it right now. Whoever God gives that stuff to the creator to get it about, that's what it's all about. It's just the body being used. You never know how God's going to use your gifts and your talent. Let's go, Carmen Baker. Ministry. Serving people. That you just serve God's people. Second commandment is like, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love those friends on Facebook. Enough to tell them about what you got going on, but tell them about Jesus. Don't leave him out. Take him where you go. He just told us there's nowhere we can go without taking this Holy Ghost power. If you are a witness to him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, if you are his witness, you're going to have some ministry behind your name. You're going to be doing something. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's a beautiful picture that needs to go to the world. Just loving your neighbor, just loving people because God first loves you. Let's go, Carmen Baker. I want to tell you this right here. I don't know who drew that one, but that's it. The middle cross, the three cross. <laughs> we learn today that our power, it comes from the Holy Spirit. We are a church that's going to live the five works. All church that bear the name of Jesus should be doing those five works. We believe in those five works. If you're derelict in one of those areas, let's talk. If you want to join in any of those areas, let's talk. Christ has already died for us. For those people who got questions about the missing link, send it to us in Messenger or send it to somebody in your group because it goes up today what the missing link is. We are telling the world that we want to have the missing link. And as past appreciation, first Sunday in March, my prayer is first Saturday in March that they have a podcast if they are ready. And the missing link shall be found and inviting other people in. Amen. Yeah, but only if they are ready. Today I want to tell you this right here. Participate. The prescription that you have from God, he said, get involved. He, God gives us a basic, simple prescription. Get involved. Get in where you fit in is what the world said. That's another thing that's from the Bible. Do your part. Your, your part, the people who do the the social media for the church, I really admire them because they can just do that stuff. They can just do it. That's not what God called me. I'm called to teach and to preach. My gifts are wisdom, knowledge and wisdom and teaching. But the people who have the gift of mercy showing, get involved. The people who have the gift of administration, get involved. The people who have the gift of prophecy, get involved. The people who have the gift of giving, whether it's your time or it's your talent, give. 
And people of God know this right here. If you don't have love with all this stuff that God is telling us to do, you don't have anything. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God gave the son. The son gave his life. What are you giving? What are you participating in? What are you doing? God has doing, done his part. Jesus is doing, has done his part. And the Holy Spirit is doing his part right now. What are you doing? My question to you, accept the cross of Jesus Christ and find out your meaning and find out your purpose. Everybody has a purpose in Jesus Christ. Please, please accept the Lordship of Jesus and do what he's called you to do. If you don't know what God's calling you to do, inbox, inbox, right? On Messenger. Inbox us on Messenger because we'd love to share with you and talk with you. We can do it over the, 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 the phone. Or we can call. We got a church phone. We call you. You want to talk? You want to pray? But we want to go to every part of this world just as a prescription told us to do, to go everywhere, to be a witness of Christ. Wherever you are, we want to share Jesus with you. You got an international phone line? I challenge you. We'll call you in Egypt and Greece too. We really will. If you just want to hear about Jesus, we, because the Lord, why? Because the Lord says so. And we're willing to go. Amen. Let's give the Lord Jesus Christ a clap, hand clap. <laughs> and again, people, God, it's only 12 people that are in here. So it's not a lot. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much and we praise you. Lord, we thank you that you gave us the perfect prescription to participate, Lord, to profess, Lord, because you will provide. And then we're ready for our presentation, Lord, that we can present in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for who you are, for all that you do. Lord, we have left our ministry to you, and we pray that you bless it, that you multiply. Father, we pray for the lost and for the unsaved, and we pray that you will speak to them, Lord. And if it's your heart's desire that they speak to us, Lord, we're ready, we're willing, and we're able. Lord, right now, I personally uplift the ministry of the, the, of the missing link to you, that they'll see that they cannot go out there half-hearted and not prepare. Lord, speak to them. Speak to the law. Speak to them and say, Lord, we pray for our family members who do not know you as Lord and know you as Savior. Lord, we pray for our friends who do not know you as Lord and know you as Savior. Lord, we pray that, uh, that people come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ because you allowed us to live. Help us to be these vessels that overflows with the word of God, Lord, and people see the light and love of Jesus Christ in us because you live within us. Father, we thank you so much, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church of God did say amen. Amen. Thank you. Give the Lord Jesus a hand clap of praise. I'm asking you to stand up with us, please. Tuesday night at Bible study, we are studying from the gospel according to St. John, John chapter 14, verse 1 through 6. I'm asking the church now. If you will read John chapter 14, 1 through 6, as Minister A.G. is teaching, at the beginning of the lesson, I'm going to show you what the Bible says, and it is in your Thompson Chain reference. Open it up. What Christ means by the way, the truth, and the life. And from a biblical perspective, you'll know how to tell people that Jesus is the only way. Amen? Yeah, he is the only truth and ain't but one eternal life. That's what it means. Find somebody you can point at. People of God, we're in the world. We believe this is the time you can point at somebody when you're telling them the benediction from the Scriptures. God told Moses to tell Aaron that this is the people's benediction, that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number six. 24 through 26. Father, Lord, in the sweet and holy name of Jesus, Lord, what you going to do with the fire on the inside? We ready, God. We want to go. We want to say it. We want to do it. We want to be it, Lord. In you we have, we live and move and have our being, Lord Jesus. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord. Forgive us for our sins, Lord, for drifting away, for not doing right, Lord. Forgive us, but we desire so much 
to be all that we can be in you. Thank you, Jesus. We decide to take your medicine. The pre prescription is to be a witness of you. Lord, we desire to be a witness of you everywhere we go and everything we do. Father, we love you so much. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, we thank you for the, the, the winter rains, the latter rains that are happening in Macon, Georgia right now. And we pray your holy and divine safety on the rain sick highways. Lord, bless us, keep us, and draw all of us closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church did say, amen. You are dismissed, people of God.